Hello everyone, my name is Doug Bassett. I'm Senior Technical Instructor here at Stormwind Studios. And one of the really cool classes that I absolutely love teaching is the Cisco Identity Services Engine. And ICE allows you to go in and verify who is trying to connect to your network and find out how their systems are connecting, what user accounts they have, what machines they are on, what posture they have, what profile they have, do you have antivirus, when's the last time it was updated and all that. And it's, it's a really cool piece of software. I love it. It's like building Legos and you have all of these really neat things. One of the things that we can do is we can hook to what are called external identity sources. And external identity sources just means that it's not a database that's actually on the ICE server. So if I go in here and look at this, you'll notice that I have um, a single identity source that would be on the, uh, the, the identity services engine database or what I can do is, is I can go in and I can have identity sources all over the place. I can use uh, Active Directory, which is really, really popular. We can do LDAP queries. It's not going to be as rich as Active Directory, but it is going to provide us with a lot of information. Of course, I can do Radius because ICE is a Radius server. And I can use uh, all sorts of things like your, um, your MAC address. I can go in and I can look at your uh, your header addresses, host header addresses, find out what type of agent you're on. I can use this to go through and set up uh, various profiles to try and figure out what type of device that you, you are. I can use RSA servers, SAML, whatever. Now, the, the vision of done this here is to be able to do uh, EPTLS. This is the Extensible Authentication Protocol, Transport Layer Security, where I want to do kind of a one-two punch, where not only do I figure out what device you're on, which is good, but I also want to know what type of, or what user account that you're on. And uh, that's because if I just went in and I said, oh, well, what machine are they on? Well, what if somebody stole the, uh, the password and the user logs on and now they're on this particular machine and boom, how do I know that it's actually them because I've never seen this tablet before? Or if I just am able to identify the tablet, how do I know that the administrator didn't walk up and you know go to the bathroom or something and leave, leave their console open? And now we have somebody who is just kind of sneaking in there, logging in, and I don't know who the, the user account is. So with ETLS, we're going to try and combine both of these, user authentication as well as machine authentication. But when we look at all the stuff that we have, where is our number one repository for user accounts, as well as computer accounts as well, where I could issue things like certificates? And the answer is going to be Active Directory. So with Active Directory, we have a nice hierarchy, which has organizational units and has all the different components, including computer accounts. I can set it up with a certificate authority where I can issue digital certificates as you go in and authenticate. I can use group policies to put all that stuff in place. And, and in the class, the, uh, the 715 or the 300-715 uh, class, I go through and I show you how to do all that stuff. But one of the things that we need to do is we need to be able to hook our ICE machine or our ICE server into, into Active Directory. And there's a couple of gotchas on this. Um, we're going to try and use Kerberos authentication, which means we have to be very, very careful about the time. We have about a five minute window because otherwise they're going to think that it is a replay of a, a previous authentication. And so we need to make sure that we are synchronizing our time between the domain controllers as well as the, uh, the identity server. We also need to make sure that we have the appropriate ports that are open and uh, it doesn't work with NAT. But the big thing is, is how do I get this to attach? Now, um, when I go over and I look at the, uh, the Identity Services Engine, we, uh, this is a brand new machine, hasn't had any configuration on it besides getting it up and getting an IP address. Um, one of the things that it does have to have, though, is it has to have the ability to do a DNS lookup because I'm going to tell it the domain name that we're going to connect to, and it has to be able to go in and look for those SRV records that identifies, oh, this is where the, the domain controller is, this is where the global catalog server is, and all that. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to have this connected into Active Directory, and then I am going to pull down things like group memberships. Um, you can even uh, extend Active Directory so that it has the ability to um, store MAC addresses, all that other stuff so that I can use this to gather more information to identify exactly who's connecting up. Now, it used to be really complex to set this up, but let me show you how easy it is. I'm going to go into administration, we're going to go into deployment, and inside of deployment, I'm going to go ahead and drop this down. It says, oh, you're not in a cluster, and we're not in a cluster. They call them ice cubes. I love all the ice analogies that Cisco uses. 
which means that uh, everything is going to be running on this one particular machine. So I'm going to go into this one particular machine and we are going to make some changes to it because I want to turn on certain services. And the service that we're looking for, let me get my, my head out of the way here, is all the way down here at the bottom, we want to use the passive identity service. And this is a service that Cisco has set up to make it very, very easy for us to, uh, to hook with other systems to be able to identify who is trying to log into our environment. So now that I've done that, I want to hook up to my external store. Now, the big gotcha on this is I have to make sure that all of the ports that I would use for Kerberos authentication are open. I also need to make sure that I'm pointed to the right DNS. We typically are not going to advertise our DNS server's IP address. We would call that a bad thing. Uh, we're not going to advertise that out to the public. So I can't use like Google 8.8.8.8 server. I would use an internal server that has the DNS SRV records uh, in there. So I, I've set that up when I, when I did the initial setup. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to go into external identity sources. Now uh, we have lots and lots of options here. We can go in and we can do CAs, we can do Active Directory, we can do LVAP, ODBC, just everything that's available. We're going to go ahead and do Active Directory. So inside of Active Directory, I'm going to say we're going to add, and we're off to see the wizard, and it's going to say, well, what is the join point name? Now, this can be called anything. You can call it Susan. It doesn't matter. But you're going to use this when you go through and you create your, um, your authorization and your, uh, your particular authentication rules inside of ICE. So you want to make it pretty easy for you. And also, you can have join points to multiple domains. Now, when I join this, I'm going to be taking my, my ICE server, and I'm going to make it a member of that Active Directory domain. And so I can only be a member of one domain at a time, but if I have multiple ICE servers, they can be members of different domains. Or I can just say, hey, everybody, we're going to be in one domain. And with Active Directory, I can uh, not only pull in the stuff from the domain that I joined, but I can also pull in the stuff from the entire forest. So if I have subdomains and other subdomains and parent domains, and I have an alternate tree with a different namespace, with Active Directory, it all works. If I'm doing something like LDAP, LDAP, it's just that one domain, so it's not nearly as flexible. Plus, you can't pull in as many attributes. So let's go ahead and call this one AD, and I'm going <laughs> to have a domain. I wanted to register it so that, uh, you know, we could have it and I wouldn't get sued. And so uh, we call it GoatHop. Got to spell it right, though. GoatHop.com. And the Active Directory domain is GoatHop.com. So it's going to go to its DNS server and say, hey, we're looking for goathop.com. And uh, we'll see if it can find it. So cross your fingers, hold your breath, and hey, it found it. Now it's going to say, do you want to have all of the ICE nodes join this Active Directory domain? So if I'm in an ICE cube where I have monitoring servers, administration servers, and policy servers, and this server, and that server, and I have fault tolerance and all this, I can have all of that join the Active Directory domain, and it makes it boom, boom, boom really easy. I don't have to do it onesie, twosie, onesie, twosie, onesie, twosie. But right now I have one server, and I don't know in the future if maybe I'm going to need to join to another domain. Maybe we're going to go through and do something like protected access management and I need to be able to lock that stuff down. So I'm going to leave myself flexible because one of the cool things about this is that you can join and you can pull back anytime that you want. So we're going to go ahead and say yes. Oh, I, I meant to say no. <laughs> Let me hit cancel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, I need to set this up. It's not joined. So I'll click on it and then I'll say join. So you can go ahead and hook that join point, and then even if your Active Directory isn't quite set up yet, I can join it after the fact. So we're going to go ahead and say join, and then it's going to say, well, I need to have a user account, and this is going to create a computer account for the ICE server inside that Active Directory domain. So you have to have a user account that has sufficient permission to create a computer object. Now, you don't want to use administrator, but I'm going to use administrator. You just need somebody that has a sufficient permission. And this, uh, this is not the administrator account that happens to be on the local machine. This is an account that has to be available up inside of Active Directory. If I wanted to, I could specify an organizational unit. I can store the credentials. So as I add additional nodes, they would be able to join as well. But you know what? Security environment, I'm not going to store anything. So I'll say OK. And then we will see if it connects. Processing, processing. 
Bada bing, and it says, cool, but how do I know whether or not it worked? Well, we have a really nice diagnostic tool right here. So we'll fire off the diagnostic tool. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna do a series of tests. So I can say, hey, go ahead and run all these tests. And it's gonna go in and it's gonna check all the different things, all the different components with Active Directory to find out, hey, can I find the uh, SRV record? Can I go in and look at the uh, ticket granting ticket? Are the global catalog servers available? Are the domain controllers available? Is the Active Directory service running? What about uh, the, the network time protocol? Can I go in and access that? And it says, why, yes, it's awesome. And by the way, you can have this run on a regular basis. So if you're like, hey, I wanna, you know, this is something I'd probably wanna know about. Maybe I wanna set up some alerts in case we lose Active Directory connectivity. That would be something I would probably want to know about. So we're gonna go ahead and have this run on a regular basis. But what about the, the user stuff? Let's go ahead and dig into that. Now, if once I have this attached, you'll notice that it says adgoathop.com. It has a server in there. I wanna see if I can find information about a particular user. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my server and I will say test user. And then I would put in the username information about this user. I'm just gonna say administrator. Let me click on it. And then we'll put in the password of that uh, particular administrator. Too many passwords to remember. I think I got it right. And I can pull in all the, uh, the groups that this user belongs to. I can look at all the attributes. And that's the important thing. I can use any of the attributes inside of Active Directory, even if I extend Active Directory and include things like digital certificates or maybe the MAC address of the devices that you're registered. I can use all of that as part of my authentication and uh, authorization process. So let's go ahead and hit test and see if I can grab all that stuff down. Yep, there we go. Here's my administrator information. Uh, what about the groups? Can I look at the groups? Why, yes, these are all the groups you happen to belong to. Oh, look, we have exchange in here, so I have exchange information. What about some of the individual attributes? Well, here they are. So this is all cool for a particular user account, but you know what? I really don't want to assign permissions based upon user by user by user. It doesn't scale really well. But what I would like to do would be to be able to assign permissions based upon Active Directory groups. Why create separate groups in ICE and create separate groups here and create separate groups there if I can all pull it from that centralized repository known as Active Directory? So I'm gonna go up into the groups inside of here and then I'm gonna say add. Now notice by default, it doesn't just pull all the groups in. It's not harvesting your entire Active Directory because it may not need it. And if it doesn't need it, why muddy up the waters having all that stuff in there? So we're gonna say add. I'm going to say select groups from the directory, or I can make my own group. I'm going to say add it from the directory. And I can put a filter in here. I can filter it off the name. I can filter it off the SID. I can do any types of filtering I want, built-in, domain, local, global, universal. And if you're not really familiar what these different active directory groups are, because, hey, you know what, there's a Cisco uh, training, um, I would recommend that you go in and attend our 70-742 um, class, which is Will Panic teaching uh, active directory for Windows Server 2016. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab uh, all of them. What the heck? We'll just say retrieve the groups. And then even though I'm pulling all of the groups down inside of Active Directory, I can pick and choose the ones that I want. So for example, oh look, uh, I wanna have users. Um, I wanna go in and I wanna find people who are domain users, things like that. Oh, domain controllers. Um, here are domain computers, here's guests, here's the domain users. And so I will say that is the one that I want. And that is the only one that I actually pull down. Now notice it shows me the SID. That's because all the permissions, all the stuff is based on the SID. So if I pull down a group and the administrator immediately changes the, the name of that group, it's not going to affect anything because it is based on the SID. Well, what if you change the SID? Well, I can go in and I can say, hey, let's go ahead and update the SID value. And I can pull that information in. And then boom, away it goes. So this makes it very, very easy for us to use our primary repository of information as far as user accounts and group accounts and computer accounts go. And this makes it so that when we are trying to authenticate somebody, it brings us closer to that step where we want to authenticate the computer or the device you're connecting into as well as the user account. Now I have barely touched the surface on all the cool things that the, uh, the identity services engine does. 
we go into authorization. We talk about .1x. We talk about web auth. We talk about guest portals. We go in and we talk about bring your own devices and how to deal with that. We go in and we show you how you can build all these really cool rules to make sure that the people that's on the network is the people that's supposed to be on the network. We also show you how to set up self-service portals. So if you have guests comes in, come in, you don't have to sit there and go crazy trying to fill all the stuff out. So of all the classes I teach, this is one of the most fun. And it is also very, very, very in-depth. So it's, uh, it's my pleasure. If you do have any questions about this, feel free and email me, Doug.Bassett, two S's, two T's, at stormandlive.com. I'm more than happy to, uh, to talk with you about this. It's one of my favorite classes. You can tell I'm a little bit excited. And I hope to see you in another class real soon.